That's loud. Well, to be honest, part of my message is about not being silent today. So come on, let's be loud. <laughs> so welcome to church. Welcome to Icon Church. As Paul said, my name is Debbie and with my husband, Nathan, we're campus pastors here in Chesterfield and we love Chesterfield campus. We love Stocksbridge and we love Sheffield, but we love Chesterfield campus. So why don't you say hello to the person next to you, give them a high five, tell them that you love this campus and take your seat. Like Paul said, if you're here for the first time, we want to give you a huge welcome. You're only new once and then you're just part of the family. So make yourself at home Put your feet up, grab yourself a cuppa, just like you would in your own house, because you are now home, which is incredible. And I am really excited for Imagine on Tuesday. I know Paul's already mentioned it, but I want to mention it again, because I love Imagine. And ladies, you need to come on Tuesday ready to have fun, ready to have a laugh, ready to um, enjoy yourself, because it is going to be fun. We have got some fun planned on Tuesday, and it is a great one to bring your friends to, because they would have an amazing time too. So it's going to be great. Hopper 7 here on Tuesday. But today, as you know, it is Palm Sunday. And I just want to take a moment just to encourage you. This week is an important week in our Christian calendar. It's If you're a follower of Jesus, this is the week, the culmination of our faith and everything that we believe. This week was Jesus's last week on earth. And I want to encourage you to take some time to get into your scripture today, this week, in the run-up to Easter. Get into your Bible, read the stories around Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday. I want to encourage you to take some time to look into God's word and feel how they would have felt in these stories. Think how God would have felt sending his son in this situation. Think how Jesus would have felt. Really ponder on how it would have been in those days. And as we prepare for Easter, as we remember the meaning of Easter and what we believe, I believe that God is going to reveal himself to us more than he has ever done before. I believe that we're going to have the opportunity to fall more in love with him than we ever have before. And that he will remind us of his goodness and his faithfulness and the sacrifice for us, which is incredible. Let me pray. Yes, Lord God, I thank you for today. I thank you that we can be in your house. I thank you for Palm Sunday. I thank you, Lord God, that Jesus came and brought us victory, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can praise your name, Lord God, that we can praise you and glorify your name, Lord God. We sing Hosanna today. We sing Hosanna and we lift you high and we say, God, save us. In this moment, speak to us and save us, Lord God, as we hear your word. I pray that no heart will leave this place today the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to have a look at Luke 19, 28 to verse 40. If you've got your Bibles with you, you can turn. We're going to look at the NLT version and it says, After telling a story, Jesus went on towards Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. And as he came to the town of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, and he told them, and as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden before. And uh, in my version, it says um, a cult. You will find a cult there. And I had to look this up. Because I was like, what on earth is a colt? Surely a donkey is a donkey. Apparently not. A colt is a young male donkey that specifically is 1 to 14 years old. So we're going to call it a toddler donkey. Okay? It's a toddler donkey. It's a male one, not a female. A female is called a filly, just in case you wanted to know. So as they were untying it, somebody said to them, "Um, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied and said, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowds spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. And others spread out leafy palm branches that they had cut out from the fields. And when they reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his disciples began to shout and sing as they walked along. 
praising God for all the wonderful miracles that they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Put But some of the Pharisees um, among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers, for they are saying things like that. And Jesus replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Or in other versions, it says the stones would cry out. My message today is called, Will the Rocks Cry Out? And the whole thought around this verse and this message today and my question to you this morning Icon Church is will you choose praise or will the rocks cry out in your silence we have a choice today Icon Church and I think we've already made that choice to be fair because worship was incredible and no one was silent in this room this morning but we have a choice today that we can choose to praise or we can choose to be silent And if we're silent, it doesn't mean God doesn't get the praise because the rocks will cry out on our behalf. But I don't know about you, I don't want a rock to cry out on my behalf. I want to praise God and give him all the glory and the praise myself. You know, growing up when I was a teenager, and even a little bit still sometimes now, I was very easily influenced by popular opinion and culture and fear of not being accepted. When I was younger, when I was at secondary school, I went through a phase of listening to music that I didn't like, wearing clothes that weren't my style, believing things that I didn't really believe, having values and principles that weren't me and that I hadn't been brought up on. Even drinking things that I didn't like the taste of. That's one of the ones I still do now. I go to a bar. I like the look of a cocktail and a gin and tonic. I like it when it's got the floaty fruit in it. Don't always like the taste of it. But it looks pretty and I like it. Sometimes I order a mocktail, but it has to look as good as those ones. But anyway. I can even be... Um, so easily influenced that when I was younger to try and fit in with certain crowds and certain people I, I didn't smoke my parents didn't smoke I didn't even like to smoke but because I hung around with people that did I used to carry in my blazer pocket a lighter and a packet of cigarettes I know exactly it is stupid it is so stupid but that's the lengths that I went to and that I thought I needed to go to to be accepted to feel like I fit in I was basically a sheep I just followed the crowd when I was at secondary school I chose to silence myself for the sake of others I chose silence And that weakness of mine often crept into church as well. This weakness, um, I began to act a certain way at church. I began to pray and worship a certain way at church just so that I thought I was doing the right thing, so that I could be accepted, so that I could feel like I fitted in. But church is the one place where you don't have to feel like that. You don't have to be something you're not or do something that you're not. You can be you because you are accepted in church. And that praise and that worship, it wasn't genuine. It didn't change me. It didn't change my life. It definitely didn't glorify God. My praise and positions in life did not mix. My praise and the people I hung around did not merge. My praise and my path did not meet. They were separate. So I want to ask us today, church, how do you view your praise How do you engage in worship when you're praising God? We've done it already today, and some of you are maybe sitting there thinking, well, what did I do? How did, how did I do it? Sometimes we get so caught up in the moment and in the spirit and in the presence of God that we, we just do it naturally. Maybe you were singing, but were you singing with your mouth or your heart? Maybe you were lifting your hands, But were you lifting your hands as surrender to God or surrender to church culture? Maybe you were jumping in those first couple of songs. Maybe you were praising God and jumping and you were enjoying it. But 
Were you doing it because you wanted to give God the best praise party ever or because you missed out on your gym workout this week (laughs) and your watch was telling you you needed to get some steps in? I don't own one of them watches. That is not what I do, honestly. (laughs) Are we just doing what is expected to fit into church culture? Are we being seen and being heard to do and say the right thing just like everybody else? Or are we genuinely praising God? Many of us can be easily silenced in our praise to the point where we're not genuinely praising God. We can be silenced by shame and think that we're not good enough to be in church or to praise God. We can be silenced by fear and think, what will people think? Or what will God think of me? We can be silenced by culture because it's not what we're used to. Maybe you're here for the first time in this church isn't what you're used to. That's fine. But you don't need to be silenced by that. Just praise. Just feel comfortable. Just worship. Just do what feels natural to you in this moment. Just don't be silent. We can be silenced by disappointment. Maybe you've got some unanswered prayers. Maybe you've got some unmet expectations and that causes you to maybe not worship and praise God the same way that you would normally do. Maybe you're silenced by familiarity. It's just another Sunday. It's just the same way I always praise. It's the same song we sung last week. But God can do something so different from one Sunday to the next. God can do something different in the same song, with the same words, in the same seat. It doesn't matter what Sunday it is. It doesn't matter where you're sat, who you are and what song you're singing. Praise God like he deserves it. Praise God regardless of the song. Do you know what? When I go and visit other churches or when I go to conferences, they don't sing the songs we sing. Part of me thinks they're not as good because we love icon songs and the stuff that we write and the songs that we sing and we choose to sing are amazing, but it's just not what I'm used to. They're not familiar songs. They're not icon style songs, but it doesn't mean that they're not good enough songs to praise God and worship God and sing his praises in those moments. It doesn't mean God won't move the same because it's a different song. Don't be silenced by familiarity. And in the disapproval of this story, where the Pharisees tried to silence the praise and said to Jesus, rebuke your disciples, Jesus said to them, but if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out in praise. In other words, you can't silence God's praise. You can't silence. God will be praised regardless of whether they shout or not, because then the rocks will just have to cry out in praise. God wants us to praise him, but we need to praise him. We need to remind ourselves of who he is. We need to praise him to get into his presence. We need to praise him so that we can open up our hearts to everything that he wants to do in us. We can choose not to. We can choose to be silent. But then we miss out on so much of what God has for us. We need to choose to praise him and not allow the rocks to cry out on our behalf. So are you allowing yourself to be silenced? Are you willing for a stone to cry out in your place? Do you believe that God is only worthy of a stone's worship and not you, his creation's worship? Will you choose to praise or will the rocks cry out in your silence? I did a a bit of research this week as I was preparing this message and I did some um, some research into group singing. Now, I don't sing. I once auditioned back in the day for being on the creative team. And uh, Gav said no. And Ruth said, Gav, you can tell her because I'm not. (laughs) I didn't make it. But we have got an incredible worship team with some amazing singers, some amazing musicians. Um, So I don't group sing. I don't go to a choir. I solo sing in my car. And, you know, when nobody can hear me and it's great. I sing in front of my kids because they don't care. And uh, they do tell me to be quiet though. But But I did some research and there are some great benefits to singing in groups. Research tells us that group singing improves your vocal skills. So maybe I do need to do some group singing. 
and it uh, improves your musical abilities. It, it reduces stress and anxiety. It boosts your immune system. It builds your confidence. It enhances social connections. It improves your breathing and your posture. And it increases happiness and well-being. I don't know about you, but that's worth group singing for. It's amazing. And we get to do that every single Sunday. We get to come into church. And we probably don't think about it like this. We think we're coming to church and we're just coming to praise God. And we are. But then we get all of these benefits that come from it. We get the social connection. We get the reducing of stress and anxiety. And part of me wonders whether it's not just research and the fact that it's group singing. But actually, no, that's God's presence. Maybe as we sing we reduce our stress and anxiety. As we praise God, we build our confidence. We enhance our social connections. We increase happiness and well-being. So for all those of you that are good at singing, keep praising God and you'll just get even better. Worship team, don't stop what you're doing. You're just going to get even better. For those of you that would say you're terrible at singing, like me, imagine how much worse you'd be if you didn't come to church. Okay, just saying. So maybe we've been coming to church and just watching the worship team sing. Maybe you're like, God, why can't I be set free? God, why isn't this situation changing in my life? God, why isn't this moving? And God's just like, but I've given you the tools in your worship. I've given you everything you need. I've given you the answer in your praise. But we still come into God's house and we're silent. And that might not mean silent as in we don't sing. We might sing the words, but are we singing with a heart? Are we truly, genuinely praising God in these moments? There's such a beauty in praise. We praise God because he's worthy, but we're actually designed to praise. We're designed to worship God. And that when we worship and when we praise God, something in our mind and in our body and in our soul changes. God can heal when we praise. God can set us free when we praise. God can breathe life into situations that seem dead because we praised. God can cause miracles because we praise. God can restore things when we praise. God can lift our spirits when we praise. And God can bring victory when we praise. There are so many things that God can do just because we open our mouth and we choose not to be silent. We choose to praise. So why should we choose praise over silence? I know we've mentioned a few things already, but we're going to dive into a couple more things. Why should we praise over silence? Why should we choose praise instead of letting the rocks cry out in our silence? Well, the first thing, everyone say number one. Say it again so I can drink. You were all too quick. The first thing is praise is your garment. Praise is your garment. If we go back to Luke 19, 35 to 36, and it says, So they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their garments over it for him to ride on. And then as they rode along, the crowds spread out their garment on the road ahead of him. Their garment was symbolic. Their garment was symbolic of them giving everything to Jesus. Their garments covered them. Their garments kept them warm. Their garments provided a place to sleep. I nearly brought my pink fluffy dressing gown with me today for this message because that's the one garment that I have in my house that I would have if I'm cold. And it's like, it goes to the floor. It covers me. It's amazing. It keeps me warm because Nathan won't turn the heating on. So I have to wear this thick dressing gown. And sometimes when I'm cold at night and I accidentally fall asleep in my dressing gown in bed, it, I sleep in it as well. So it covers all them three things that they used their garments for back in the day. 
but they took off their garment and they laid it on the floor as a sacrifice in honor to say everything that I have, this thing that keeps me covered, this thing that keeps me warm, this thing that I need to sleep, I give it to you. You can have it. You can have it all. So when they spread their garments out before the king, they were saying, we give you all that we have and all that we need. That sacrifice was their praise. And the Bible tells us, if you look more into a garment of praise, in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. (laughs) Praise is our garment. We have been given the garment of praise so that we can use it instead of feeling despair, instead of feeling negative feelings, instead of feeling worried, we can put on our garment, our garment of praise, and we can choose to praise God, to take away those feelings and proclaim that God is over it all, that God is greater than it all. Most of you in the, in the room know that me and Nathan went on a fertility journey for quite a few years. It was a long time ago now. But, um, and we had Zion, our 10-year-old, who was successful, and that was amazing. But we had two failed attempts of IVF after Zion. And we don't really talk about the failed attempts as much because now we have two adopted toddlers and we don't have time to talk anymore to anyone. Um, I can't get a word in edgeways. You'll see me running around after them. Um, but on our final, um, final attempt of IVF, it worked. It did work. The third attempt, it worked. And um, I had a positive pregnancy test, and it was great. Um, but they do this thing when you do IVF where they test your HCG levels. It's a hormone in your body that basically tells them that you're pregnant. And it's meant to, like, skyrocket high. And mine was up, but it wasn't up enough. And it kept creeping up but it wasn't going up enough. And uh, it was confusing. We didn't really know what was going on, but we were positive. We were, you know, giving it to God and believing for the best. And so the short version of this story is Friday, we went and had a scan and there was nothing visible on the scan, which was fine. It didn't necessarily mean anything, um, but they were concerned that it was a failed pregnancy. But we didn't believe it. We carried on as normal. And this happened to be the same weekend as our brother and sister-in-law's wedding, Sam and Rachel. And it's a funny story. So the doctor wanted me to come in on the Saturday to basically stop the pregnancy. And I was like, yeah, I can't do that. That's Sam and Rachel's wedding. We're having a lovely little wedding ceremony, going out for a family meal. They're legally getting married. He was like, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Come back Sunday. I'm at church on Sunday can't do Sunday. Sunday's the place where I am on a Sunday. Uh, church is the place where I am on a Sunday. He was like, okay, that's fine. Come back Monday. I was like, well, Sam and Rachel have their proper wedding on the Monday. And I'm a bridesmaid. I'm walking down the aisle. My son's a page boy. That's not going to work either. Sorry, I can't fit that into my schedule. So he was like, okay, Tuesday, uh, I'm at Centre Parks. <laughs> We're booked to go to Centre Parks after the wedding. So I can't do that. He was like, fine, do what you want to do. <laughs> and, um, which is basically, you know, Nathan's learnt to let me do what I want to do. That's what I do. Um, and so he just said, just come back if you need to come back. It's fine. Just ring me if you have any problems. Um, but the point to this story is that on the Sunday we came to church. In and amongst all this chaos and, you know, the lovely weekend of the wedding, but the chaos of what was going on in our private life... We came to church on the Sunday morning, and then after church, Nathan went and played a football game, and uh, as you could expect, Nathan's always playing a football game, and I went to Paul and Jeannie's for dinner, and unfortunately miscarried my pregnancy. Now, I could have chosen in that moment to stay at home, be silent, cry, 
be alone and do nothing. But the point of my story, sorry, I feel like this is a really morbid story. <laughs> There is a really good valid point to this story. Um, But I chose to come to church. And um, in that moment, I think I was sat there. um, I was numb. I couldn't really feel anything. Certainly wasn't happy. Didn't really want to be here. Didn't really want to talk to anyone. But you know what? That was where I needed to be. I was far better being in God's house and choosing praise over silence. And maybe my head wasn't fully in it. Maybe my heart wasn't fully in it. But I still chose church, chose praise, chose to be in God's presence instead of going home. And there are some situations in life that we go through where we could quite easily say, I'm going through so much, I can't get to church this week. I don't think I can handle facing people this week. I don't think I can be in church praising this week. I'm just going to cry. I don't think it's the right place for me to be. Or I think I'll type my life story on social media because I'll get loads of support and encouragement on social media. But actually, that's not the place where we need to find it. The best place where you can find what you need, find peace, find healing, find restoration, find everything that you need in that moment of need when you are in desperate need of God's presence is in church, praising him, praising him. I chose that day to worship in despair when everything was going wrong, when I couldn't control what was happening, when I could have just cried, I chose to pray. When I could have just hidden away, I chose to praise. When I could have given up, I chose to praise. When I could have been silent and I just allowed the rocks to cry out, I chose to praise. I chose to make sure that my inner attitude was to praise. A garment of praise is a representation of a person's inner attitude. So what will your attitude be in those situations? What would your attitude be if you had gone through what I went through? There's no right or wrong answer. There's no judgment. There's no criticism. And I don't tell you this story to make myself look good and be like, wow, she came to church after going through all of that. I don't say it for that reason. I tell my story because I want you to know you're not alone. On a Sunday where you walk through those doors and you think you can't handle it, there's 10, 20 other people that are probably feeling the same. When you come to church on a Sunday and you think, I'm just going to cry the whole way through this service. Good. Let it out. Give it to God. Cry it out. Praise him anyway through the tears because we've all been there. We've done it. I want you to know that this is a place where you can feel that you can be real and honest with God, that you can praise regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what you're going through. You don't have to put on a front. You don't have to pretend to be okay. You don't have to stay at home because you think that we can't handle it. No, you need to be here. This is where you need to be in those moments. Don't think that you can't come because you're too emotional. Don't think that you can't come because you're not in the right frame of mind. Don't think that you can't come because you might ruin the atmosphere with your tears. You can't. You're not in charge of the atmosphere. God is. So don't worry about it. Wearing this new garment, this garment of praise, it aligns us with God's heart. It aligns us with his spirit. It aligns us with his plans and his purposes so that we can fulfill everything that he has for us in our lives. So church, will you choose praise as your garment or will the rocks cry out in your silence? The second thing is praise is your thanksgiving. In Luke 19, 37 to 38, it says, When he reached the place where the road started down the mountain of olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles that they had seen. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. They're shouting this psalm. This psalm is originally from Psalm 118, 26. And they're shouting this psalm, shouting praises to him. And the purpose of this psalm is a profound collective of gratitude to God. It's gratitude to God 
but it's designed to be done in community. These psalms were sung and they weren't meant to be sung individually. These psalms were written to be sung corporately, to be sung in community, to be sung together. Um, There's an amazing pastor and author and international speaker called Paul David Tripp. And he says, corporate worship is a regular gracious reminder that it is not all about you. You've been born into a life that is a celebration of another. What an incredible quote. And in actual fact, neurology tells us that your brain can't be grateful and anxious at the same time. It's not possible. So when we worship together and we remind ourselves that it's not all about me, when we think less of ourselves and focus more on God than our problems, then we can place all of our energy, all of our focus on God, focus more on him and have that garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. We can glorify him in those moments because there's something that happens when we have, you know, my story, when we have your story, when we have her story and his story and all these stories that are in this room there's something that happens when we come together and we praise God together in the same place something happens when we come into Icon Church when we stand united in praise and thanksgiving in Zechariah 9 we're told to rejoice and shout in triumph it says rejoice O people of Zion shout in triumph O people of Zion look your king is coming to you he is righteous and victorious yet he is humble riding on a donkey on a donkey's colt as Jesus went on towards Jerusalem they were in this moment This moment where they began to rejoice and praise, expressing their gratitude and thanksgiving. They had a choice in that moment. They had a choice as Jesus came down on that donkey. They had a choice to be silent or they had a choice to praise. And they chose to praise. Icon Church, will you choose to rejoice? Will you choose to shout? Will you choose to praise as your thanksgiving? Or will you let the rocks cry out in your silence? And then the last thing, praise is your garment, praise is your thanksgiving, and praise is your help. In Luke 19, 38, as we've already read, it says, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. In the same story, but written in the book of John instead of in the book of Luke, that same part of the story says in verse 13, it says, they, look, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. When you separate the word Hosanna, the Hebrew word Yasha, which means deliver or save, and Anna, which means beg. You combine them together and the English version of the word Hosanna literally means, I beg you to save. I beg you to save. Please deliver us. Please deliver us. When we say Hosanna, it's a cry for divine help. It's a cry for divine help and it came to be a figure of speech in those days for God's deliverance, for praising God for his deliverance. And so as Jesus rode into Jerusalem and the crowds were perfectly right in shouting, Hosanna, they were acknowledging Jesus as their Messiah and they were crying for salvation. They were recognizing Jesus and knowing that he was able to give them the help that they needed, that he was able to help them. And uh, you might remember that story of Paul and Silas as they were stuck in prison and they started praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening and then suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the praise and the shouting had caused the prison to shake its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and every chain on every prisoner fell off. 
I wanna say today, church, that if you feel like you're in a prison, praise can free you from that prison. If you feel like your circumstances are chains, praise can break those chains. Praise can restore your marriage. Praise can heal your body. Praise can bring you peace. Praise can answer your prayers. Praise can direct your path. Praise can cause miracles. Praise can open doors just like it made the doors swing open on that prison. Praise has power. But that praise comes from our mouth, which therefore means our voice has power. Each and every single person in this room matters and your sound, your voice, your praise matters. Each and every single one. And like I said earlier, when you're feeling like you're in despair, when you're feeling like you're stuck in challenging circumstances, when you feel like you can't worship, get yourself to church. Get yourself to church, the place where you can praise and sing Hosanna over those situations, where you can stand in community and praise Hosanna over your situations. Hosanna, crying for divine help. And it doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter how you feel, it doesn't matter what you do or what you say, no one is watching because we're all doing the same. We're all just praising God. That's what we're here for. There's authority in your voice. There's power in your voice. There's healing in your voice. There is help in your voice. You haven't got to be the best singer. You haven't even got to be singing in key. But if you're going through something, if you need God's help, you need to praise for the help. You need to get that breakthrough and you might need to be the loudest singer in the room. I don't know about you, but when you're feeling desperate for something, when you're um, so passionate about something, you get louder and louder. I'm sure they did at the Chesterfield game yesterday. I'm sure it was loud. Maybe we need to get loud and passionate about our situations. Maybe we need to get loud and passionate about asking for God's help in our lives, about using praise for help praising God. When things get harder, praise louder. When things feel like they're not going your way, praise louder. When things feel like that they're coming crashing down on you or you can't see a way through, just praise louder. When it feels out of your control, then let God do it and just praise louder. You may need to say to yourself, I don't care what my neighbor thinks. I don't care what the people around me think. But if I come to the house of God, I will not be silent. I will not let a rock cry out for me. I will lift up praise and lift up my worship. I will praise like the breakthrough is already here. I will praise as if I'm already healed. I will praise as if the help has already come. There is help in your voice. There is help in your praise, but will you choose to praise as your help or will the rocks cry out in your silence? Come on church, let's stand together. In a minute, we're gonna praise together. We're gonna praise God and we're gonna worship, but we're gonna praise as if it's our garment. We're gonna praise as if it's our thanksgiving. We're gonna praise as if the help is coming. We're going to praise. And so all over this room, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on in your world. I don't know what you walked into church with today. But God still requires you to praise. God still wants you to praise. He requires something from you. He wants to speak to us. He wants to help us. He wants to move us. He wants us to reach out to Him and that requires us to praise and cry out. You know, I'm not the same person today that I was when I was a teenager, all of them years ago. I am not so easily influenced and silenced anymore. I now choose to praise over silence. I now choose to praise. And today you have the same choice. Whatever it is that is going on in your world, you can choose praise or you can choose silence. 
You can choose to praise right now in this moment, or you can choose to just use your mouth and not your heart. You can choose to just lift your hands, but not actually surrender. You have the choice today to praise. So all over this room, with every head bow and every eye closed, I just wanna give you a moment to respond to God. Respond in this moment. Maybe today you need to pray to God that He would give you a garment of praise instead of despair. Maybe today you need to thank God that every, for everything that He has done, but pray that He does it again. Maybe today you need to praise God and pray, God help me, Hosanna, Hosanna. Maybe there's some people in this room that need to just sing Hosanna over and over again, Hosanna. A cry for divine help in whatever situation you need God to move in. God, today, as we have our heads bowed, Lord God, and we surrender to you this morning, Lord God. God, we choose praise as our garment. And we pray, Lord God, that you would replace fear and anguish with hope, that you would align us with your plans and your purposes. God, as we choose praise as our thanksgiving this morning, God, we believe that whatever you did before, you can do it again. We turn our praise into praise reports through our praise this morning, Lord Jesus. And God, as we praise as you are our help, Lord God, we declare Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna this morning, Jesus. We cry for your divine help. Free us from the prison that we're in. Break the chains from the things that are holding us down, Lord Jesus. Restore marriages in this room today that need restoration. Heal sick bodies in this room today that need a healing, Lord Jesus. Bring peace into chaos of lives this morning, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, as we choose praise for our help, Lord Jesus, that You would direct our paths, that You would cause miracles and breakthroughs, Lord Jesus, that You would open doors just like You opened doors for Silas, Lord Jesus, and Paul. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would cause doors to fly off their hinges in the lives of people in this room this morning, Lord Jesus. We lift you high, Lord God. And as we go into worship in this moment right now, Lord God, we give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. We lift your name high in this moment, Lord God. And we declare, Lord God, that praise is our garment. Praise is our thanksgiving. And praise is our help. Come on, Icon Church. Every single voice in the room.
I thank you, Lord Jesus, that every single Sunday, not just on a Sunday, but every moment of our lives, we have the choice to praise your name, Lord Jesus. We have the choice to give you glory and honour and praise, Lord Jesus. And this morning we give you it all. We lay down our garment, Lord Jesus, and we give you everything, Lord God. We praise your name and we honour you, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord, today that as we reach out and as we praise you, Lord God, that our praise would be our garment, that our praise would be our thanksgiving, and that our praise would be the help that we need in the situations and circumstances where we need you to move, where we need a miracle, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are that help, Lord God. And I pray for anyone in this room today that requires a miracle, that requires that breakthrough, that requires you to move in their lives, Lord Jesus. Maybe there's someone here today that felt that they couldn't be here, but they came anyway. I pray, Lord God, that you would just move in their life today, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, the circumstances and situations in this room that feel out of our control, Lord God, I thank you, Jesus, that you are in control. And that as we praise, Lord God, we allow you to move into every single area of our life, Lord God, where you can do what we cannot do, Lord Jesus. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And maybe you're here today and we've been talking about Jesus, but you've not yet made the decision to follow Jesus. I believe today is the day where you don't have to remain silent anymore. Today is the day where you can choose praise, where you can choose Jesus. Maybe you've tried to do life on your own. Maybe you've tried to fill the void of what you think is missing, but you've not been able to fill it. Maybe you've tried being silent, but it is not working. And you, maybe you've even come here today by complete accident, but it's not accident. God is working in every single area of our lives. And today is the day where God can change your life. Today is the day where praise can be your garment, where praise can be your thanksgiving, and where praise can be your help. When Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday and rose again on Easter Sunday, he died to be your help. He died so that you could have a relationship with God, so that you could have this connection, so that we don't have to do life alone, that we can be in relationship with God. So in a moment with every eye closed and every head bowed, I'm gonna count to three. And if that's you today, you've never made this decision, but you want to begin a relationship with God and you don't want to remain silent anymore and you're saying that you want God in your life, then after three, just raise your hand in the air, just so that I can see it. But a member of our team will see that you've raised your hand and they're gonna give you a gift to start you on this journey of a relationship with God. So one, Jesus died so that you could have new life. Two, you don't have to wait for Easter Sunday. You don't have to wait another moment. You don't have to stay silent. Three, if that's you saying you want to give Jesus your heart, you want to start a relationship, just raise your hand and say, God, I surrender. I choose praise. I choose praise. Come on, everyone in this room, if that's you today, just raise your hand. church can we celebrate with everyone that just made that decision for the first time come on if you just made that decision for the first time you have just made the best decision of your life and we're going to pray together we want to pray with you and we're going to pray a prayer that's on the screen now so let's pray this together and let's pray it not just with our mouths but let's pray it with our heart and let's pray it together ready Jesus, I come to you today and confess that I need you. Please come into my life and forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, be my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for giving me a brand new start. Today, I open my life to you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a massive shout of praise this morning. Come on, thank you, Jesus. We 
give you all the honor and all the praise. Amen, amen. Well, Paul, I don't know how much time we've got because I got way too into that message. I would love to worship again. I'd love to party out. I don't know what we can do. Can you uh, tell us I, what I we can do? I think we can do something. Let's do something. What I want to say is that if there's anybody and you, you want prayer, we'll have a prayer team down here. They're ready. And uh, you can come forward. We're going to close the service. I will do something. We'll put it in your hands. I think. Well, I actually, like, Paul, like, well, it's all it's all in these guys' hands because they need yes, to choose hands not too. to be silent. Yeah, very good. All right, <laughs> church, don't rush off afterwards. We've got tea, coffee, cake. If you're new, we'd love you just to go through the doors, turn left. We've got welcome area. We'd just love to get you to know you better. We'll bring some tea, coffee, and cake to you. We're going to finish big. Heading into Easter week. Actually, what, a, what an incredible message that was, by the way. Let's just thank Debbie. If you, need, if you need some prayer, if you want prayer for anything that's been said through that message, come forward. We've got a great team here willing to pray and stand with you personally. So don't rush off. Let's have tea, coffee cake but we're going to party out come back tonight 6pm don't forget your cash because we're doing that bake sale for getaway and uh, and that but um, right have you had enough time they're ready they're ready let's just thank them that they're ready and let's close our service Praise God, you're all sanctified in the grave. I praise God, you're.